So good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Farnborough International Air Show 2018. My name is John Sneller, I'm the Head of Aviation at Jane's by IHS Market. And I thought uh, this morning I would give you a quick run round the displays and what's happening here at the Farnborough International Air Show. So a few seconds, minutes uh, on uh, important and interesting aircraft that uh, our readers and subscribers will find useful. So our first aircraft that we have uh, behind me here is an ATR-72 uh, made by Leonardo and uh, it originally is uh, Ariane Transport Regional which is uh, uh, a local transport aircraft within, funnily enough, regions and this one has been highly adapted as you can see to a maritime patrol version which is proving to be increasingly popular against some of the much bigger and more expensive versions. So on this aircraft you can see the adaptions that have been made and if you look underneath there you'll see the missile approach warners sticking out of the nose of the aircraft and underneath, just underneath the steps, is an electro-optic uh, infrared sensing pod and some sort of radar uh, for maritime patrol and anti-surface warfare uh, operations. But a very efficient aeroplane with these uh, excellent uh, Pratt & Whitney engines so it has very good range and it's big enough to be able to analyze uh, lots of information on board before sending it back for further analysis. So the next uh, aircraft, we have two similar types of aircraft from, uh, again, the Leonardo stable. And one is uh, the competitor for the American TX program. This is the T100, uh, which, uh, as you can see, has a very large cockpit, so excellent all-round visibility, uh, a, a, a two-engine aircraft, very, very efficient, and uh, it was a real competitor uh, with uh, Honeywell and CAE offering this as the competitor in the future. Uh, American uh, TX program. So here we have the uh, aircraft one along from the T100 which is the M346, a very very uh, well developed aircraft and uh, you can see here this is a proper lead in fighter aircraft and you can see the uh, the ASA scanning radar on the front and uh, the, a number of roll fits that the aircraft has from bombs to guided weapons and a lightning system advanced pod for uh, identifying targets so very flexible aircraft really impressive display here uh, from uh, the M346. So ladies and gentlemen we're in the middle of the static park now and if Patrick just does a spin around you'll see uh, many military and of course civil aircraft here at the show. So uh, we have a 737 MAX here, uh, the, the, the latest in this very successful run of 737s and you can see how large the engines are these days uh, providing all that thrust uh, to carry 130, 140 passengers and uh, uh, coming round the other way now we have the back of a 787 Whisper Liner of Qatar that we're looking at and you can see the big sort of GE or Trent engines not absolutely certain uh, what, they, uh, what they are and then coming round to the right here we have two Lockheed Martin products uh, two C-130s from the United States Air Force and they are sa sandwiching in, in the middle an Apache AH-64E and uh, you'll recall that this is what Prince Harry flew in uh, in, a, in his tours in Afghanistan. Here, here we see uh, an F-15E of the United States Air Force, this one LN from Lakenheath in Suffolk. So here we are down towards the runway area and you can see some aircraft uh, across the other side of the, uh, the airfield uh, beyond us. But in the foreground here we have two Piaggio products which are particularly unusual in aviation terms. One is unmanned and near identical on the other side is the manned version of the Piaggio Evo. So, And you can see it has reverse propellers so they are pusher propellers rather than pullers uh, as is conventional on most aircraft uh, but uh, a very successful uh, and maneuverable and efficient uh, uh, executive uh, aircraft and uh, next to it they've converted it to a, uh, a UAV. Okay, so uh, here we are down at the Saab stand, uh, also on the static park, and behind me is a Gripen 
E mark, the latest mark uh, from Saab, which, uh, as you can see, is a fantastic aeroplane. We saw the M346 earlier uh, from uh, Leonardo, and this is one step on from that. Very much in the uh, fighter hunt, m better operating costs because it has a single engine rather than a twin engine, but very powerful, and you can see the flexibility of uh, equipment and weapons that it can carry on board. This Gripen E is the next generation of the Gripen model and stable, which has been successfully sold in its C and D guys, C being single seat, D being du uh, dual seat tandem, and uh, it's been sold to South Africa, one here to the UK, uh, to Brazil, and uh, to uh, Sweden, of course, and uh, a number of other uh, countries. So the Saab are hop hoping to build on this with the new Gripen E, and uh, we're hoping to have someone from Saab just talk to us. Uh, in a few minutes. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, earlier on the Leonardo stand we saw how regional transport aircraft are being modified and here is another example of uh, a major modification to a regional aircraft, this being the Q400 aircraft that L3 have modified uh, to become a multi-mission aircraft. So this aircraft, you can see underneath a large canoe-shaped uh, radar, uh, a phased away, very long radar for carrying out ISR missions and uh, maritime patrol type uh, missions. So that gives it uh, an exceptional capability. And again, there is plenty of room on board for the mission team to gather that information, uh, analyze it, and then uh, uh, use other assets to, to manage uh, in terms of attack and uh, prosecuting those particular targets. Uh, this is the Longsword, which is L3's derivative of the original air tractor, which was an air tractor originally. It was used for crop spraying primarily, but it has been incredibly highly modified to take the weapons you can see behind me. So you can see on here it has a 500 pound laser guided bomb, it has a, uh, a, a podded gun on the other side, uh, it has a rocket system uh, off the outboard pylon, but you can see with eight pylons, uh, uh, four on either side here, it really does pack a punch. So we can also see just behind the engine there, where the cord is uh, connected, that there is an EOIR pod. So this aircraft does have a limited ISR capability, so it can identify targets and then release weapons like the laser-guided bomb, which is shown here on the third pylon on the, uh, the port side. Just to complete the cycle, we've seen a Q400 uh, derivative. We have seen uh, Leonardo's offering based on the ATR-72. And this is the ubiquitous C295 from CASA, now Airbus uh, Defence and Space. And you can see here that this is highly modified, again, for military use uh, in, in many roles and has been very popular. Over 200 sold uh, around the world. So very successful and really uh, a, a strong competitor uh, against larger aircraft like the, C like the C-130. So stop press, uh, subscribers will recall uh, the spat, shall we call it, between Bombardier uh, and the American government stroke Boeing uh, of uh, last year and how that panned out. And you will recall that the C-Series, which was sold to Delta Airlines, got itself into hot water because of subsidies. Now that situation has moved on very quickly because Airbus have bought, effectively, the rights to the C-Series aircraft. Only uh, two weeks ago, Airbus announced that the aircraft would no longer be called the C-Series, it would be called the A220. And you can see two examples at the A220 here, uh, one for Air Baltic and the other here uh, from uh, Airbus itself. And you can see quite clearly how Airbus has moved in very quickly on the marketing front to badge this Bombardier aircraft as uh, it, one, of it, one of its stable. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the end of uh, Flightline Farnborough for uh, uh, this year, and uh, I'm going to end with the big ladies of the sky, and behind me we have an Airbus A400M. You'll immediately be drawn to the red sticker on the tailplane, which is a celebration of the RAF's 100th anniversary, its centenary, on the 1st of April 1918, when Jane's had produced its sixth book, Jane's All-World Aircraft. 
Uh, also on the flight line here, in terms of cargo and transport and outsize, we have the Antonov 178, which is right behind us, and further down uh, is the KC-390, which is Embraer's first real venture into true military transport aircraft. All of these aircraft use much civil uh, 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 systems, uh, flight displays and mission computers to ensure that they are consistent and they reduce the price of ownership of these aircraft. So to conclude, uh, it's a magnificent show once again, uh, undoubtedly a centerpiece of uh, aviation uh, uh, marketing and uh, showing the latest technologies and we saw the Tempest uh, being rolled out metaphorically yesterday, uh, the, the sixth generation offering uh, from the RAF in combat aircraft. And down on the line here, we've seen a number of civil intermilitary derivatives, we've seen a large number of cargo aircraft and in Inevitably, much more technology being packed into much smaller aircraft because it's lighter and uses less power. These are very important characteristics of being able to evolve aircraft so they are uh, more cost effective into the future.